Hi Gary, um, those of us that have had the opportunity of following both your playing career and your managerial career maybe found it a little bit surprising to see you now at Bedford Town. So how did the initial talks come about and what was the attraction for you? Um, the initial talks came about because I, I rang the chairman and said, I believe you've got a managerial vacancy, have you filled it yet? Um, and as I recall, he thought it was a prank call. Um, didn't, he's somebody that I met when um, Bedford Green shared, ground shared with Yedding. Um, so I knew him, had his number, um, and um, he, um, yeah, he thought it was a prank call, to be honest. Um, and that was back, I think that was the same week that the manager here resigned when, um, I think the same weekend that we played Eastley at Farnborough, which was my last game then. Um, so um, I spent some time then having a look at it. Um, to be honest, I didn't want to go and sit on the shoulders of somebody who was struggling. Um, I said go to a team down at the bottom and go and watch their games and try and meet the chairman and try to kind of put myself forward. I wanted, to, if I was going to go to a club, it was going to be to a club that didn't have a manager. Um, the third job, job came up, um, kept, became available, and I had a look at that, uh, the geography of it, and I, I felt that was a little bit beyond, and it wasn't full-time, and I, I wanted to look for a full-time job. Um, there's very few clubs in the conference that are even within an hour's drive of where I live, so it would have meant moving um, if I was going to go and apply for one. I did apply for one um, up north, didn't get much of a reply to be honest. Um, and then the other option would have been to go into um, league football, but I'm not going to get a manager job in league football, so I had um, I'd look around and I, I was at Exeter City, Spurs, Fulham. Which Brentford next week, which Northampton next week, just having a little look around and try and build some knowledge and then see what jobs might be available there. And to be quite honest, I wanted a manager job. Um, so I then started to, I came to a couple of games um, at the um, Chairman's Invitation, um, went to a reserve game, um, and then generally had a look around. I went to a Chelsea Town game, went to a Burnham game, went to Aylesbury against Marlow um, across kind of the previous eight weeks. I looked at the level and felt that um, if I can get a team organised and motivated, I'd like to think that you know the finances are not that different. Whereas you look at the conference, Luton are always going to be at the top, and a club like <coughs> his Yeni, for example, who can't compete financially, are always going to be down near the bottom. And so, whereas at this level, there's not that that massive difference. And so I think a club with lesser financial resources can do quite well. Um, plus. By the time we got to last week, I was um, bored out of my mind, to be quite honest. Um, jobs available, um, I, I've decided to take it, I committed to the end of the season. Um, I'll have a good look at the club, a good look at the level, um, and have a look around and see what else is there, but I'm committed to the end of the season. Uh, I'm not getting paid, um, and um, I've, I've said that I'll, I'll do it for nothing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good to be back. This Tonight's the third session. We had a really good session last Thursday, very good performance on Saturday. Good session Tuesday, and then we've got Fleet Town away on Saturday. So you've had the opportunity now to meet the players and work with them a little bit. Obviously, up to now you've been managing, in some cases, professional players. This is a different level. What challenges do you face with managing players at this level now compared to what you've previously been used to? To be quite honest, ability-wise, not a massive difference um, at all. There's um, one or two very good players here who, ability-wise, could could play for Farnborough certainly. Uh, and possibly go up another level as well. Um, but the difference that I found is in the little things. Um, I had the um, pleasure of working with um, Ronnie Whelan, and he always said it's the little things that make the difference, because the big things anybody can get right. Anybody can turn up to training, but turn up early, do a little bit of work beforehand, make sure you're prepared, make sure you, that you look the part, and do the work, and then stay behind afterwards. Those little bits of extra, and do that week after week after week, that's what makes the difference between the levels. Um, and so I've had players not turn up to training, I've had players um, turn up late. Um, I mean, it's only, like I said, the third session and we're, they're not due to turn up for another hour or so, but I know there's a couple of players in the, in the bar now, um, not drinking, um, but there'll be some turn up after we've started, which very rarely happened at Farnbrook, very rarely happened at Hazen Yelling because the, the type of player, one, I didn't tolerate it, and two, the type of player they wanted to do the right things and I've always felt that the biggest difference between the various different levels is attitude um, and the way they approach it and the way they set their stall out not just in games um, but in training as well um, so but a technical ability there's not a massive difference to be honest. In terms of the job that you've got yourself 
how different is what you have to do here? Um, you know, is the manager of a club at this level involved in a lot more than just leading the team out onto the pitch kind of thing? Um, I think it depends on, on how, you, how you want to manage. I mean, I run training, but I ran training at Farnborough and I ran training at um, Hayes and Yang. I was the one, I, I might not have done the warm-up, I might not have done the fitness element of it, but the actual core work in the training on the training pitch, I always did that because that was where I think my strength is. Um, and I'm doing that here. Now, at times at Yedding, uh, at Hayes and Yedding, sorry, I, um, last summer I was cutting the pitch. Um, I remember okay. after training one day, um, pre-season, I was cutting the pitch because the, cut, the pitch needed cutting. So I've been told that as you go through the levels, you just get more staff. Now, we're struggling with the physio, we, um, but I've got a, a very good, uh, one of the players is, is kind of assistant, and then I've got the reserve team manager coming with the first team as well, and he's a good guy as well. I've got a goalkeeping coach here, which he, we didn't have at, um, at Farnborough. Um, but, uh, and there's a, there's a good secretary here, the, the, the chairman is hands-on as well. So there's, there's enough staff here to do the job. I, I'll be honest, I tend to get to places early and get them to get it set up the way I want anyway. And I think I would be like that whether I was at Bedford Town, Hayes and Yedding, Aldershot, <sighs> trying to go through the leagues, Leighton Orient, Reading, Manchester United. Um, I think I, I'd always be the first one in and probably the last one to leave. But um, Alex Ferguson is like that, so I believe. Um, and I think... I've said it to people before, I will manage at Bedford Town exactly the way I managed at Farnborough and I'll ask for the same things. Um, and if the players give it, then I think we'll be successful. If they don't, then we won't be and then it's up to me to get better players in. Yeah. What is the potential? I mean, you said that you've agreed to do the job to the end of the season and then, then you'll review. If you were to stay here long term, how far can a club like Bedford Town realistically go? There's no commercial manager. We've got a full-size uh, grass training pitch that's floodlit, which didn't have a farm and didn't have it um, at Hayes and Yedding, and very few clubs do have. It's 500 yards away from a tube station. The potential here is probably limitless. There's certainly capability to go up into the um, Southern Premier. Um, and if you're in the Southern Premier, you're certainly capable to go into the Conference South. Now, depending on what then is in place <laughs> as to whether you can make a bit to go into the Conference. No, that's not going to happen year after year after year because obviously the core elements are not core elements are not in place. But the chairman's very forward thinking. He's got he's had plans now for, for a year or so. They've only been here for a year, uh, two years, sorry. Um, he's got plans for developments, he's got plans I mean he um, somebody who was involved in um, Middlesex FA told me that um, that when they were last here the, the facility of the grounds was nowhere near what it is now. Um, there are things moving at the club, it's changing. Uh, I think um, I think this, the team is certainly good enough to stay up in this division. Um, and what I've said to the players is, go on a run of ten games, winning ten games, which is really not beyond the realms of possibility. Bear in mind, I've seen twelve different teams now, so I know that I, I think I've got an idea on the standards. So, promotion this year or playoffs this year is certainly a poss is certainly an outside possibility. Um, but to be honest, you, you'd be probably more realistic to look at it next year. Um, and I think Yedding showed that um, once you build some momentum and get a promotion, you can go again. Um, and I think once you get to the Conference South, then it's about the finances. They, they do come into, there's a big difference in club at the bottom is generally the one on the least money, and the club at the top is the one with the most money. So at that stage then, you've got to be looking at, at the income. Now, if they were hiring out the pitch in a different way, or, or, or they are getting more money for that, if they had a commercial manager come aboard, if the crowd levels had gone up, if there was a community programme in place, Who's to say that the crowd can't go from whatever it is, 80 odd average now, up to 200? Because if you can get it from 80 to 200, you can get it from 200 to 400. Mm -hmm. There's a massive potential around here, business wise, I mean, biggest airport in the world, um, is literally, literally 250 yards away. Um, so um, there's, a, there's a massive amount of potential here. Um, as to where it goes, that depends. It depends on the structure of the club and who's involved and how, how ambitious they are. Looking at your squad of players that you currently have, are you pretty much going to be working with those players now until the end of the season, or will you be making changes, or is that just going to be an ongoing assessment? Um, what I said to players was, I need, need three or four weeks, three or four games to, to have a look and really assess whether I feel that they can do the job that I want them to do. They might have been able, to, and that might be the players that were under the previous manager. You know, might not have. Uh, it might be a different job that he was asking for. Mm -hmm. But the job that I want them to do, um, I need time to assess it and, and the finances as well. And nobody's on a contract, so um, anything could be changed, basically. And I might say, look, I think that player's worth more money, that player's worth less money, and 
see try and change it around like that and, and, and put it into perspective. Um, but um, the uh, when the manager left in November, the captain, um, I think he was captain at the time, took over as, as kind of caretaker manager, and he's still here. And they won six out of eight games. So our last nine games, we've drawn two, lost one, and won six. So that, to be honest, is his promotion form. Yeah. So you know, I, I'm not, I'm not the type to say, well, you've been winning games. I'll tell you what, let's change it. If it's not broke, then we don't fix it. So we'll see how we go. I mean. You could well go and get beat 5 0 on Saturday, and you know and there might be some real problems. But the the squad are, are in good form. They're um, they're a good bunch of players. They're they're eager. They've they've worked very hard in training on Tuesday. I expect them to work hard again today, and, and they seem receptive. So um, at the moment, there's no plans to make massive changes. There's one or two injuries, and uh, there's a couple of positions that we're short in. But um, I've been making phone calls this week, and um, I'd like to think that by the middle of next week, if I want somebody to come in, I'll have somebody to come in. But um, but there's some there's some real potential in the squad. If you do want to add or need to add one or two, where will they come from? Um, you know, I'm thinking again that the the players that you've worked with before may not be looking to play at this level. True, and um, I wouldn't be looking to pay them the wages that, that I know that they're on. Um, I mean, I, I took three or four players from um, Hayes and Yelling to Farnborough, um, and some of them took a, a reduction in wages to to go there because they wanted to carry on playing full time. Um, they won't. They won't make the transition to here because the, the finance is not there. But when I was looking for players for Farmer and when I was looking for players for Hayes and Yelling, there are a vast number of players that I looked at, and so some that I might have looked at and said, "Well, I don't think he's quite good enough for Farnborough and they will say, "Okay, actually, he is good enough for this level." So you, you pitch it. It's not going to be saying preparing a team to play against Farnborough I got to play prepare a team to play against Fleet, which is a different standard. Um, so it's. There's a there's a vast number of players out. We are 500 yards from a tube station. It is there are I'm, I was told to start eight million people within 15 minutes. So you know there's a massive market out there, and um, so it, it's where they'll come from, everywhere. Um, some players travelling from East London. Um, so it's but I, I I would like to think that I can bring in some players of of the right quality. Okay. Well, we wish you every success. And Thank you very uh, much. We look forward to seeing how the uh, the club progresses. Yeah, be interesting. Thank you very <laughs> much. Okay.